What's up, you six bitches? My name is Sterling, and we're gonna have another quick MS update because a lot has been happening in my body the past three weeks since I started taking the colloidal silver. So let's just start from the beginning of the first little four ounce bit that I had because the next morning when I woke up, like instant different, something is happening in my body to really, really hypersensitivity and like numbness to basically almost completely subsided. So let's start at the beginning with the little bit. When I first had the first four ounces, the next morning, like the bottoms of my feet were like getting to be tingly. And then over the course of the next week, it started to like gradually go up my body of tingling, numbness, hypersensitivity. Like it was, it was weird. You touched me and it was just like pins and needles sort of t tingling throughout the entire area that's being touched. And then for a while it was nothing but numbness where you could like touch me and then I didn't feel it on the surface, but I felt it like in the muscle where, so the best way to describe it is if your foot is like asleep and you're like playing with your, your, your leg or your foot, the part of your body that's asleep, it's like that. There was a night about a week and a half in where my body, sorry, my legs, just my legs, because it, it started to gradually go up my body and then it stopped at the waist for a couple days and then it started to go up my body even more. And then it, it stopped back where it, it originally did. So right here and then equal to the back and then, e then right about there with the armpit. So the basically nipple down was the affected area, but the torso and the, the, and the legs, they, they acted a bit differently where the, the legs were a lot more intense and the torso was was about a quarter of the feeling that the legs were but it was always the same type of feeling throughout the entire body there was one night when i was sitting on a couch and my legs went from being numb to hypersensitivity to numb to a bit of both in the course of like a couple hours and one of the weirdest parts was it was also on my junk but in a very dulled down form and I'm gonna be honest because this is just a, a, an honest vlog and documentation of my multiple sclerosis. It was actually kind of enjoyable because it, it made intercourse better in a way. Yeah, better. <laughs> I didn't become just sensitive to touch. I became sensitive to heat and chill. My feet would get super cold if at all the floor was cold and I didn't like have slippers on it. Even if I did, it was still like, oh my gosh, my feet are ice cubes. But when getting touched by like a warm hand on my thigh, it was, it was so intense. It was like a hot rock has been just been placed on my leg that was like on a fire. Like, oh my God, the feeling was just amazing. So in a way, I'm kind of having fun with my MS and it's weird to say because I know it's going to be a horrible ride at some point in life that I may as well enjoy the little things that I get now. And also at the same time, I'm kind of on track with what this colloidal silver is supposed to be doing. The journal said that when she started to take higher dosages of colloidal silver that she ended up having a what she called a healing crisis, which was basically all her, her her symptoms coming back and eventually subsiding. That's kind of what has happened in my body is I, I decided to take 16 ounces night and day straight off the bat. I didn't do what she did and, then, and did four ounces a day for like a year or something before upping her dosages. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna try this out and see what the heck happens and I may as well do it in a larger dosage so I can get the effects sooner because even at the end of her journal she said if I discovered the IV method before I would have saved myself a lot of healing so my plan is to do the colloidal silver drinking thing until my body is like okay this, this it's done what it can do with the amount of silver that's getting into my bloodstream through my stomach and then I'm gonna go straight I'm gonna try out the IV thing myself and just see what the heck happens because really, why not? 
I mean, what what do I really got to lose? It's just colloidal silver going into my vein. So I'm really interested in seeing what happens with that. But there are some more little things that ended up happening in my body. So my right hand has subsided a little bit in its feeling of numbness. It was never really hypersensitive. It was just basically kind of numb. And in my arm as well, I feel it a little bit more in my bicep right like in here than I did the past couple days. But things are kind of going back to how they were before I started drinking the MS. But that bicep is actually kind of new, the, uh, the tiredness of this arm. But overall, it does feel a little bit different. I'm not really sure if it's better or worse or if it's kind of just the same. I don't know. But what did happen is I was getting a lot of little micro twitches, just like in the little, in the muscles, just like everywhere across my body. It doesn't happen anymore. Although the past few days, I have had a couple, but I was getting like hundreds a day. Now I get like two, three, four, if not none. And for the past three weeks, up until like a couple days ago, I haven't had any, which was just really interesting of how that symptom stopped, but the hypersensitivity and the numbness decided to actually creep back. And now it's actually, it's, it's almost back to normal. It's, it's, it's leaving my body or it's, it's subsiding or I don't know what's happening, but it's, it's interesting. One of the other things I had was like a numb ring that would be like around my big toe, just my big toe. And it would move up and down. It was there for the past couple weeks. And it was on both toes. It was on both toes. It was really weird. And it would move. But that that ring feeling is is not there anymore. So it's it's just a little bit hypersensitive, like the rest of the, the legs. Something of interesting note is unless I was touching something or being touched, I really couldn't tell that I had any symptoms at all because the only time I actually know that my legs are hypersensitive is when something is touching them. Or, or what was really interesting is when it was windy. When the wind was like cutting into my pants and then taking the heat away, that, I don't know how to describe it, but it was so weird feeling. Like it was like tingly and then like cold at the same time and it just made this really odd feeling, just a really odd feeling. I think one of the last interesting notable things is when you crack a knuckle like like that, that crack sound and that feeling. Well, from the years of playing lots of rugby, my knees and hips do that all the time. Like I need to like crack a hip to be able to stretch properly. And randomly I like twist and my knees will like pop and crack. And what was interesting about it is I couldn't feel it. Because I could I could feel the motion and sort of the, the clunk of the actual cracking of the knuckle. But at the same time, it was also like, I didn't feel it at all. And I think at one point, because I couldn't actually really feel all that much in my legs, my right knee actually got strained from doing something. It's, it's good now, but I swear that I hyperextended it because I couldn't actually have real feeling in my legs. It just, just one day, it just started to ache. And I was like, okay what's wrong and then I was paying attention to how I was walking and the way I was uh, I was actually stepping with my right leg is that I would step and then like hard straighten it not like ease straighten it and then still have a bit of a bend in it to not strain the, the actual knee but I would pop it it was um it was a strange feeling that's for sure it was only when I started getting the feeling back in my legs that I was walking normal and that feeling of ache and pain in my right knee went away. Right, so I'm gonna be a lot more diligent of updating what's happening with my body and this MS. So I'm gonna be doing that on Instagram stories. If you're interested in seeing things live updated and then eventually compiled into a little video and put on YouTube. So if you wanna wait a week, you can, or if you wanna keep up to date and talk to me about it while it's happening, then go down to the description Click on the, the Instagram link and follow me there. I'll catch you sexy bitches later and have a great day.